Hello everybody, welcome back to 2C TV and another live update. Let's talk about what is going on in our country when it comes to illegal migration, when it comes to the border crisis and of course the cost to the taxpayer. Now on this channel, over the last few years, we've given you guys all the information about the cost when it comes to the accommodation, the hotels for the migrants, the illegal migrants, uh, the cost uh, when it comes to the actual border force, the applications going through, and now legal aid. We have talked about legal aid before. The taxpayer gave money so that the illegal migrants could have lawyers. Now they are very specific type of lawyers apparently because they always very much care about finding loopholes to ensure that those illegal migrants stay in this country. Let's get on with the show and we'll give you guys all the details. All right, as usual, this is all about the fact that the British people are being taken advantage of and our politicians who are supposed to be on our side, the elected uh, politicians against uh, the actual bureaucrats and the state seem to be not really on our side, are they? So. The latest updates that we now have in terms of the cost of illegal aid has gone up compared to before. It's not really a surprise, but the number is getting extremely crazy. The legal cost totaled £71 million between 2019 and 2023. That's only about four years, averaging around £38,000 a day. Now, if this were the total cost to illegal migration, everything... I'll be like, eh, it's all right. I mean, there's still other problems with illegal migration anyway, in terms of the cultural issues and uh, the burden on public services. But, you know, if that was the whole cost, then fine. Having said that, 30, £38,000 a day for the time that lawyers are basically spending going through the applications, going through basically the cases that they're creating. Most of the time, these are the dodgy immigration lawyers who have been exposed on this channel a number of times uh, with actual video evidence showing how they tell their so-called clients how to lie, how to pretend that they have converted to Christianity, for example, in order to prevent being deported. A lie about being, for example, gay in order to prevent uh, being reported. And then they can go uh, on a march on Saturdays against Israel and say gays for Palestine because they have to pretend to be gay now for Palestine. All that is costing us £38,000 a day, right? Now, a record... £18 million was forked out just in 2020 alone, with the cost uh, coming in at £13 million last year. That's embarrassing. Now we have more people coming in now, and we have no clear plan to have any sort of deportations, even to Rwanda. So this cost is going to go up, because as the government gets ready to attempt to do the Rwanda plan, attempt... The lawyers are going to need more legal aid. And the legal aid comes from the British taxpayer. We're going to give them more money. They're going to fight the cases. They're going to stop the deportations. It's a cycle of doom. And somehow, in the mainstream political establishment, no one, not really any brave politicians leading any movement against this. There are individuals, for example, who could say, I don't know, Bravman, in terms of the actual mainstream politicians. But... Is that really enough? Probably not. Now, there have been a lot of criticism about uh, how they are conducting all this, especially when it comes to our tax money being wasted. Now, campaigners have now warned that lawyers, immigration lawyers, are lining their pockets by convincing vulnerable immigrants, apparently, this is according to GB News, to launch a series of expensive court bids without the realistic prospect of remaining in the UK. So the lawyers are also loving this, they're lapping it up because whatever happens with the case, as long as they could convince the immigrants to keep creating more cases and do appeals and everything else, then they're going to make more money anyway. It's a win-win for them because if the immigrants actually remain in the UK, they could become more long-term and permanent clients to these immigrants, uh, to these lawyers, and they could go back to these immigration lawyers and say, thank you for helping me. I have uh, six other cousins who also want to get on a boat and get here. Can you also help them? So it's a win-win for the lawyers. If people stay, they're going to get more clients. If they don't stay, they're going to get them to do all these cases and appeals and fake cases, expensive court cases. And again, the state will have to use our money to pay these lawyers. That's the reality. 
Now, Tory MP uh, Nigel Mills uh, came out to say these figures uh, show that the legal aid system needs to be monitored much more robustly to ensure that we are not wasting money on uh, spurious appeals uh, and blatant uh, delaying tactics. People are entitled to legal representation, but taxpayers are entitled to know their money is not being wasted and that funding these appeals is justified. Now, obviously, I agree with this, right? Having said that, when I get these politicians, including this Tory MP, Nigel Mills, somehow, because of the pressure on him, suddenly care about legal aid being monitored. Why do we not have this mechanism for everything right now? The NHS, for example, how much money they're wasting every day. HMRC, let's talk about the Foreign Office and Foreign Aid. Why do these politicians are only talking about this right now? Because we are putting pressure on them when it comes to the border crisis. We need to know how our money is being wasted on a daily basis, on all the departments, on all the areas, not just the legal aid. Of course, the whole legal aid must be completely reformed anyway. But what about foreign aid? <clears throat> what about the NHS? What about, the, of course, all the other bureaucracies that we're currently having? The, the media and culture departments, <clears throat> who, on a regular basis, waste our money to do diversity trainings, for example, or send them on school trips. There's the actual civil servants. Why is Nigel Mills not asking for those things to also be monitored? Because there's no pressure on that. <clears throat> he continues by saying appeals like this, uh, like these, should only be allowed <clears throat> if there is very clear evidence that the Home Office's decision is wrong. We need to get the, the message out that if you come here and you haven't got a case, you will be rejected and you will be deported. Not only that, I will go even more radical. One of the ways you can... Uh, make this country less attractive it's not just for example some people say well just remove the benefit system that, that's not really the, the only attractiveness about this country the attraction it's the fact that we now have ghettos and, and there are certain roads and neighborhoods that people could actually just go in stay there without being on benefits but they they don't have to speak english they could just work cash in hand do whatever they want to do or join criminal gangs one way you can actually change this, you have to reform the whole justice system and our international obligations anyway. I will create a system where if people illegally enter the country, they are not entitled to legal aid because the legal aid should be for our people. You contribute with your tax money every year if you work in this country and you will get that as a benefit because you do deserve representation. Fair enough. That's a safety net if you can't afford legal representation. But if someone is a foreigner and illegally enter the country, they, they should not deserve representation. They've already broken the law. Just move them back to France. Now, we can't really have this discussion because, again, the liberal elite don't care about this country and the people. <clears throat> now, Alp Mehmet, who is the chairman of the Migration Watch think tank, said... Dealing with and removing illegal arrivals swiftly is the only way to discourage them from coming. Save the taxpayer huge sums and stem the tide of clients for traffickers and activists' lawyers. However, we had also a government spokesperson coming out to hit back, saying, well, the UK has a proud history of welcoming and supporting those in need of our protection and legal aid. Legal aid helps ensure decisions on who can stay and who cannot uh, made, uh, obviously made c correctly preventing uh, costly co uh, court cases are you kidding me with it they actually mean this this was that last statement came from the uk government from rishi Sh rishi sunak that genuinely came from downing street they are proud of the system they are proud of our track record of using our tax money to help foreigners and we must continue to do it apparently they don't get it. It's like they want to lose the next election. <laughs> They're doing everything they can for their zero seat strategy. We have the first comment saying, I want to immigrate. Where can I be treated so well and given a home elsewhere? Well, I mean, at this point, I think we should all just move to Florida because also there's no income tax in Florida. So that's probably a good idea. Um, it's crazy. <clears throat> Alan has a good idea. Try deporting the left-wing woke lawyers first. Opposition gone to... <laughs> Imagine if we get rid of the lawyers. <laughs> and there, there won't be anybody left anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's, you just simply need to take away the mechanism that they are using, misusing against us. <clears throat> Jackie says, uh, used to be proud to be British, but they treat us like idiots. 
but that that's irrelevant to being feeling about being proud of being British because we still we should still feel proud of being British. The establishment does not represent Britain. That that the establishment represents the state. That's the whole point. We should represent Britain and British values. So always, always remain proud. England is over. Half of the country is already against us. But that's that's the other thing. That we have bigger problems on our hands because it's not just uh, illegal migrants or the different cultures that we are battling. It's in fact some of the homegrown problems. We literally have almost half the country for a bunch of socialists with sensitive snowflakes because they've been brainwashed over the last few generations by idiotic teachers and this education system, we have to fight against that first. Because it's that culture, it's that mentality that continues to invite more people to invade our country. That's the truth. Fred uh, Spade is also spot on, saying that the whole of the West is deeply corrupt and the elites uh, despise uh, the people. It's the fact that they, they don't even, uh, they, have, they don't feel the pressure to care. That is the reality. Corruption always existed in every state in throughout history. The problem we currently have is that we were given this uh, very nice promise, definitely in the 20th century onwards, so since the 40s and 50s with the New World Order, that we're going to have accountability and democracy, and we're going to not have dictatorships, right? Slowly but surely, this new model that we created was also infiltrated by those who found the loophole to still be greedy, to still be corrupt, but find a way to hide behind the mask of bureaucracy. Now, how do we hold them to account? Because on paper, they're not dictators. Their system allows them to hide in plain sight corruption, lies, and, and basic incompetence, let's just say. We can't even hold competency to account. That's, that's the reality. Forget about corruption. Forget about lies. Forget about greed. We can't even hold them to account when they're not competent. Those who are not competent. The rest of them, obviously, they are complicit in this whole thing. John Adams says, says we've got to stick together. That kind of reminds me, of course, uh, let's not forget, 23rd of April. Whitehall, Westminster, St. George's Day. We shall be heard. <clears throat> Art says we've never had democracy. Of course we had. Okay, and I, I think there's, there's also a problem with the education system, but the people don't know the definition of democracy. There are different versions of democracy since the ancient Greece. Uh, you, you, I think people assume democracy has to be like some sort of direct democracy in a way that if I want something, I should get it. Or if everybody in my neighborhood wants something, they should get it. That's not how it works. Democracy is on, isn't really just about what you as the voters want. Democracy as a system was supposed to whatever version of democracy we had. And right now, I'm not, democ I'm not defending the current democracy, by the way, because it's not working right now. It's a mess more than before. But democracy as a concept, the main purpose of that is two two reasons. It's not just about the voters who oh, hadn't been represented. Oh no, that doesn't matter. You think it matters, it doesn't. One main point of democracy is to actually prevent tyranny and dictatorship. One figure ruling for about 50 years. That was supposed to be the point of it. The second point is the ability for the common people to become politicians and join the establishment. And now all the people we are criticizing, the establishment, all the people in the, the, the position of power, they are the common people. Whatever you're going to say, they are the common people. They just obviously got more influence and obviously connections and money. They got to power. They were not born into it. They were not all like the David Cameron family or the kings and queens. Look at people like Matt Hancock. Look at people like Chris Whitty, Patrick Valance, Sue, uh, Sue Gray, Keir Starmer, these are all technically common people. But of course, they are no longer like the rest of us because they have joined the elitist side and they've completely, instead of representing us, they decided to be completely, at this point, blinded by the whole thing. Now, back in the day, you had to deal with, for example, Charles I. He was born into it and it becomes a little bit of a crazy guy at the end, but he still cared about the country. He just lost his mind. <laughs> And you have to deal with that. It's one figure. You have to bring him down if you want to make a change. At least democracy prevented that. But we have a bigger problem. Because instead of having Charles I, we have faceless bureaucracy. Basically, all these corrupt people hiding behind the mask of, there is not, not one person is leading this. It's all of you. Everybody from the Fauci side to Michel Barnier to Bill Clinton to, of course, those who are not even politicians like Bill Gates, they all have basically more influence than Charles I had. That's the problem. That's why people are 
frustrated with the current democratic system. Um, Matt reminds us again that uh, you all have a chance to be seen and heard. 23rd of April, 3 p.m. Whitehall, Westminster. No excuses. Hashtag peaceful. Let's not forget. Hashtag peaceful. We are British, not French. (laughs) Anyway. She says that that's really a jolly merry-go-round. Um, government funding deportations and opposition to deportations. A bit like turning on the AC and heating at the same time. That is basically the perfect analogy of the whole situation. Because the government is spending money. I was going to say waste, but it's going to be nice. Spending money, our money, on the Rwanda project. And by the way, the Rwanda project is not really just about uh, funding the paying for the flights. They've literally built accommodation in Rwanda it's empty right now they're waiting for us all that they funded that and they're also funding <laughs> the deportations uh, the, 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 the fight against deportations is a fascinating concept now this wouldn't even exist in dictatorships <laughs> because the dictatorship would decide we're either going to be funding just the deportations or we're only we're just going to be funding the fight against deportations at least with dictatorships you get a straightforward answer I mean, it's not always moral, <laughs> but at least you know where you stand with them. Laura says, technically, we have been sold out, Maya. I agree. Now the bleating politicians are complaining that uh, they are getting harassed. I know. <laughs> Look what the people have been put through for decades, especially children. Let's not forget about this. Okay. Laura is absolutely right. I'm not going to deny that right now democracy is also, or the, the democratic institutions like the Houses of Parliament is also at risk by various sides. If you attack an MP, you're attacking the democratic values. Having said that, I find it interesting that the moment politicians start getting targeted, by the way, not even fully targeted, yeah, they got some death threats. I'm talking about the recent stuff. Of course, we've had two MPs, unfortunately, over the last few years who've lost their lives. I'm talking about the recent last few weeks, last couple of months when you had the pro-Palestinian protesters outside shouting at the MPs. Suddenly the MPs were like, not only we can't vote anymore, we have to go into hiding, we also need bodyguards, the taxpayers should fund our bodyguards. And by the way, again, I'm in favour of protection. But my point is, why was it that when we were going around for years and years, telling the establishment that some of us in certain areas, at, at best, we did not feel safe because of multiculturalism, crime going up, and of course mass migration, the establishment called us racist saying there's no mob rule. There are no no no-go zones. Everything is a yes-go zone. (laughs) Suddenly, now that they're being harassed, we have to care, we have to give them money. When we were being targeted, I'm continuing to, I still get death threats. I still get targeted. They don't care. (laughs) They know about it. They don't have the funding, apparently. If I run MP, oh, I'll get proper bodyguard on the taxpayer. Super chat from Aaron Bacon saying uh, treason used to carry the death penalty as a no threat anymore. They can just say, uh, yes, that's true. Uh, pretending that it's been good. Same goes for terrorism. We don't have deterrence anymore. Aaron is right. If we are going to be, uh, it's not really just about death penalty, by the way, because there will be some who still oppose it. But any sort of deterrence when it comes to treason laws. Tony Blair basically got rid of any sort of real version of treason laws. If you have the fear that also includes politicians being corrupt. You will face consequences like Hillary Clinton, what happened to the emails, Hillary, or Hunter Biden's laptop, all this basic stuff, by the way. Then we could actually put some fear into them. Forget about the criminals, forget about the legal migrants, forget about all the others, forget about the grooming guys. We're just talking about the corrupt politicians. There is no deterrence. There is no fear for them. They can lose their jobs, like Matt Hancock, and become a celebrity have his 50 minutes of fame, and then join some sort of company board and take a good pension package. That's, that's all you can do. So all, the, the one power that we have is we can cancel politicians. We can force them to resign and leave parliament, but they're going to be fine. They're going to get a better job with more money. Narcissists. <laughs> Absolute Narcissists. <laughs> About time the state was shut down. We need Javier Mille here. We need to we need to start from scratch. <laughs> and now we're gonna have an MI5 on my case saying, Yeah, are you advocating for revolution? No, calm down. 
you need actual de de true reform in the system in order to prevent any sort of civil war. We don't want conflict, we don't want violence, but yet it's the, it's the government, it's the, it's the state, it's the people, the stupid idiots in the House of Commons who are creating tensions in society. And then they're, instead of actually looking after what's causing it, they spend more money on GCHQ and MI5 and the Metropolitan Police to basically monitor people who could become extremists. Now they call them far right, far left, far up, far down, everything else. Now there have always been anarchists. There have always been revolutionary idiots everywhere. What you should do is focus and try to tackle the actual cause, what's, what's causing it, instead of being like, let's just continue the same method in terms of governance. If anybody complains, we'll just and say, that's treason. Now they care about treason. <laughs> if I organize some sort of march, I don't know, some sort of nationalist march, they're going to say that's treason. I'm probably going to lose my bank account or whatever, right? Idiots. <laughs> Laurie says, uh, thank you for the super chat, Laurie. God bless you, Maya. You are a true patriot of Britannia. We will bring back the British Empire. Don't worry about that, Laurie. <laughs> we shall lead once again. Um... Let's see what else we have. John Adams says, best show on YouTube. Well, hopefully you're not multitasking and watching two, two videos at the same time. Thank you. Uh, and uh, what else do we have? <clears throat> Wait, where are the trolls tonight? I don't see any of them. I, <laughs> have we blocked all of them now? <laughs> uh, Miyamu says, no matter how many of them get targeted and hurt, they still won't admit the problem. That's true. They don't care for us, so I don't care for them at all. No sympathy. Yes, start from scratch. I mean, that the only the, the radical solution I also have, any future general election, I would basically create a compulsory condition. No existing MP is allowed to stand. <laughs> basically, that's, that'll be a good start. It's not the full solution. That'll be a good start. We have to choose one general election. Maybe not this one, maybe the next one. Just say, every MP must resign now. You've been around for a while. Everybody resign. Start from scratch. I know, by the way, when we say sort of start from scratch, I'm referring to the whole system, but let's just start from the House of Commons first, and then we'll deal with the House of Lords afterwards as well. Don't worry about that. And then we'll sell off uh, the BBC to Donald Trump, because <laughs> why not? It'll be fun. Um, and also Scotland, because it's got golf courses there. And the rest of the country will just, I don't know, give it to eBay or something. Um, but they're already selling us out anyway. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining our live stream. Uh, hope, hopefully you enjoyed the information and all the updates and the interaction in the live chat. You've been watching 2CTV, I'm Maya 2C, and we are the media. <laughs>